Quite often, when you're looking for support for young people, they say, has the young person experienced any trauma? Well, I think we can probably say the majority of us and majority of the young people have experienced some sort of trauma this year. Even if they've not been directly impacted by COVID, this situation is quite traumatic for most people. Guys, welcome back. Great to see you. What is going on with the shoot? Looking forward to people back in the building, full corridors, the interaction with the students, the chat with the kids, the banter with the staff. <laughs> Seeing people smile at each other again. All right, guys. You all right, sir? Reese, you've grown, mate. You're taller, aren't you? I wish I was that much taller. Just looking forward to having them all back in school. Like, just some normality would be nice. For me, the biggest thing is just having a, a busy, noisier school again, to be honest. Whether I'll be saying that in four weeks' time, I don't know, but... Slowly, please. Thank you. I feel, honestly, completely rejuvenated. I feel so much happier. I feel much more prepared and motivated to teach. For me, that's the most important thing. Crazy how excited I was about my first lesson. Turned up about 10 minutes early and just hung around in the corridor waiting for a lesson to end. Lessons face-to-face -face are so much more impactful. You can't substitute for that. Hang on, hang on. Rather than rapping to Sir, can you wrap up your face with your face mask, please? Oh, that was a good one. Do you like that? Do you like, thank you. How did you find it coming back? Because I know I had quite a lot of anxiety coming back. Anxious, but I was looking forward to it. Only really anxious about people um, and spacing and the corona and just catching it and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's okay now. Still worried about things, but like, it's getting there. I think the biggest difference between those who have got gaps in their learning that are really deep and those that have got them that are a bit shallower is more based upon their social and economic background than it is on their um, attainment. I've got students who are highly attaining students who have got history of getting top grades, but their family circumstances meant that for the duration of lockdown, they didn't have access to the work that was set. The attainment gap has sadly just widened. The job we've got on our hands, I suppose, as staff is to identify gaps in learning, not to have them come back and be doing high stakes testing and things like that because they don't need that. It's not fair on them. We're trying to avoid the use of the word catch up. We don't want them to feel that they've fallen behind in any way. They will know that they're not where they should be. If you log into social media, and lots of our children do, and they'll see lots of things in the media about what's going to be done and, and nationally and what's the picture. And to constantly hear or be told through the media how far behind they are, how many lost hours of learning they have missed over the past lockdown, what impact they might have on their future career earnings, I think is really unfair because they have worked extremely hard. Well, because you're in year nine, it's getting, it's getting more and more closer to bigger exams, and that I'm, that's what I'm worried about and just like right now, just thinking about the future and just, it's just on my mind. Like, I just worry about a lot. I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself because I wanna go into the medical industry um, and I've been doing research and I have to get like at least a grade seven at everything. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself to do as best as I can. And that's just adding on to the worry about exams and that. I was speaking to a student today who is probably not realising it, but he was an avid sportsman, really active, and he's very lethargic now, very lethargic. He's lost that passion, he's lost that kind of enthusiasm, that get up and go, and that mental health and that fitness around his mental health will have been affected. Gone from a very active person to an inactive person because I think that's going to potentially not affect them in one year. But, you know, we're now talking five years, ten years' time. You know, that might be changing, you know, their lifestyle, their health, and obviously their mental health as well. Everybody has been affected. Uh, I don't think everybody 
potentially has recognised it as well. It's not just about their academic learning. They haven't had those life moments. Those bits in life, you can see that they've really grown up and they've really moved on. So they haven't had that results day experience, work experience. The prom, the leavers assembly, all of those things that help develop people and they're developing resilience, communication skills, it's life experience. We'd normally have, you know, 20, 25 things every evening for the students to stay around during a period six. If you're talking about fixtures and school productions and things like that. So it's just nice that we've got some of those back off and underway so that that normality can return for the student. I think there's been some valuable lessons with this. This has showed the potential for blended learning, even just things like, we were talking about setting up an extracurricular club, but the fact that I, wa I wanted to do it, but we can only do it with one year at the minute. We could have teams, for example, for that, and we can have teams meetings and bringing in the digital side into classrooms more. I'm really excited to see the changes that are made within the next five or six years to the education system. I think there will be discussions on whether standardized exams are necessary, the format in which we give them in, I think there's going to be a lot of change and I'm very, very happy to be starting my teaching career at a, such a pivotal time. It's really highlighted the sort of divide, not just the digital divide, but it's highlighted the isolation that people can feel. It's highlighted why different groups have been divided. It's made everyone stop and come to a standstill and really reflect on the sort of world we're living in. And I think as a school, we've really been working on bringing in that inclusivity, not just by diversifying the curriculum, but in terms of digital access and access to free school meals and things like that. So I think there's been a lot of lessons, but technology and just kind of leveling the field. But I know that's something we'll be focused on moving forward. I'm obviously looking forward to getting back to normal. Um, I don't think anything's gonna go back to how it was. There's just no way. Um, which is good and bad in different ways. What is normal? Isn't normal, doesn't normal change anyway? You only have to go out there at break time and you see your sevens and eights running around, enjoying the space, smiling and laughing and kicking a ball and chasing each other and, and that's normal. That's some, some of the basics which I'm just enjoying having about really. <laughs>